Hi, it's Splinterverse. In this video, we're going to be taking a deep dive into one of the DM Guild products called the Weird Deck of Many Weirds. And it's by Gareth Slidehome, who did both the art and the text. I've got a link for it in the video description. So at any point, if you want to purchase it, please give that a click and check it out. It is currently priced as of this recording at $6.79 for 56 pages. And it's focused on a really fun magic item or artifact called the Weird Deck of Many Words, which is a 26 card deck as of this book. But there's options to, of course, in increase it. There's a lot of lore in this book. I really, really enjoyed reading through it. It's not often that you see an artist writer combination put so much effort into a DM Guild product. So I was really excited to see the level of detail and just passion poured into this particular product. So I'm hoping a lot of you will check it out and support this creator because this is Gareth's first publication and I'm hoping that Gareth puts out more stuff for us to enjoy. So let's take a look inside. So here you've got the intro, uh, you know, a little background on Gareth, uh, who has done comic artistry, illustration, concept art, all kinds of stuff. And uh, there's contact information here for Gareth as well. So hopefully you'll give Gareth a follow, all that good stuff. Here's the, the table of contacts, contents. So there's there's the introduction. Then there's information on using the deck. And what's really cool about this is that the deck can be an item in your game or an artifact, but it can also be used to inspire adventures. It doesn't necessarily have to be an in-game thing. So I really like that the author has thought about this from a number of different angles. I like to do that when I'm writing as well. So it's really fun to see that. The, the author also has this iconography that 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 he's using to to show you what's dm facing and what's player facing i thought that was really cool but there's a lot of stuff in the beginning about the lore there's a character that that supposedly painted these cards so there's a lot of fun stuff you can read in there it talks about when you could use the deck and and maybe there's some costs associated with that for the players because this is a really powerful deck um, all kinds of options to use the deck and, and even the history of it. And we're going to look a little bit at the journey cycle of the deck. Um, and then the individual cards, as I said, there's 26 of them. And what's really awesome about the way these cards are done is not only will you see the cards themselves in this book, so you could print them and use the cards with the art by Gareth, but it also lists traditional card uh, suits and, and values that you can use so you know queen of hearts or whatever um, it also lists tarot options so you, if you want to use either of those decks to kind of represent this deck you can it even gives you um, an option to use numbers written on paper pulled from a bag i mean the author really thinks through all the possibilities so that when you get this book, you, you're you're good to go because one of those four options should work for you. Uh, you know, not everybody has a, a, a printer, so it's nice that the author has thought through all those options for you, and I really appreciate that. And then you've got some appendices with things like finding the deck, um, divination. We're going to look a little bit at the divination and... and uh, a little bit even in the history of the word weird uh, which can also be pronounced word it's an old english word and and the pronunciation can go either way so that's that's nice and then of course an after word or weird as you like to uh, however you like to pronounce it so this is the journey of the cycle of the deck and i'm only showing the the upper half of it because i really want you to purchase the book support these creators don't want to give away too much in the videos we are going to look at four cards in full so you will get to see four of the 26 cards but i with other things i'm, I'm trying to show just excerpts because i do want you to go support these creators so 
I like this because it just kind of shows you visually how the deck might exist. So the deck slowly gathers itself in a far off place. Um, it says you are gifted or inherit the deck as one option you are tasked with retrieving an artifact and you know meaning this deck you find the deck in a long forgotten trove or collection all three of these are possibilities but whatever the reason you get to this this red hexagon here and it says you decide to take the deck into your possession and then after that there's various things that happen. You attempt to destroy the deck to stop it from falling into others' hands. You decide to draw from the deck, etc. But I really like this. It's a visual um, tool to help you figure out how to, to, to use the deck in, in your game and various things that could happen. Uh, you know, people can die or go mad, uh, all kinds of stuff. This deck is powerful in a lot of ways. It can be a boon to you or a curse depending on what you draw and the concept is that you know you draw a card and it it's quote unquote spent meaning whatever's on it happens and then the card disappears and reforms together with the rest of the deck somewhere else so the, just a lot of fun lore here uh, you know people are used to the deck of many things other decks that are out there and this this one's just another one but i think it's it's more detailed than some of the ones that are out there so i really appreciate that so let's take a look at the first card so this is kind of the layout for all of them you've got this really gorgeous original art for each of the the cards in the deck and then alongside it you've got the card back so one option is to print it and then fold it in half this this area and then laminate it so then of course the back and the front are, are together and they're nicely laminated and so you have uh, basically a card like you would if you purchased it as a printed deck so unfortunately the dm skill doesn't give us the option to print cards like drive through rpg does maybe someday they will that would be awesome so um you know the author because this is on dm skill is unable to offer a printed version unfortunately um so but you can make your own and that's awesome but as i mentioned here it's, it's telling you okay this is the sixth card in the deck if if you have a full deck and then it's got the name of the card which in this case is the five and then if you're using a, a traditional deck of playing cards it would be the ace of hearts represents this particular card or if you're using uh tarot it would be cups so i like that again authors really thinking through possibilities which i i like to do when i write as well so love that says so the card evaporates as you look at it and a bone fife appears in your hand when played no musical ability necessary it causes the immediate arrival of a flying mount roll 1d6 and then see the table for the result the mount is large enough to carry the core party on its back around its neck and in in its talons if need be to the location of your choice this must be somewhere you know well can see or have seen recently from near your current location thereafter only in times of dire necessity or danger you may call upon this steed the number of times indicated by a second 1d6 roll not counting your first investigative call once your ability to summon has run out unless originally a nat one and at the dm's discretion you can roll an animal handling check DC 18 plus to see if this creature wishes to remain in your service. A success always allows you to reroll your 1d6 to redetermine the number of calls. Failure and the five crumbles to dust. The number of calls left in the mount can be counted by coin tokens hung from the mount's bridle or the number of holes left in the five. You blow the fife and you hear a cry somewhere above and then the whoosh as a huge ring winged creature lands immediately next to your party. As the dust clears, you see the saddled creature, the leather bracings on its armor, feature multiple rings and stirrups to allow the emergency lift of several 2d4 medium or small sized creatures at the DM's discretion. Your new emergency exit steed is an incredibly regal and fully armored, plus two to its given AC. While mounted, a PC can attack as either themselves with advantage, so long as you are not confined by terrain, or use the creature's attack. And so here are the possible creatures from the monster manual and and other books so you've got the griffin the hippogriff wyvern gloamwing 
gynosphinx, androsphinx, etc. So, and the, and the author throughout is, is saying frequently, at the DM's discretion, right? So you can take this and say, oh no, it's only going to be a 1d4 and these are the four possible creatures. Or, or oh, it's going to be a 1d8 and I'm going to add, you know, a dragon in here or whatever, whatever I want to add. So lots and lots of options and ideas. Just, just even this concept, you can see already, we've only looked at one card. You can see how you don't even have to use the deck. You can just have this this fife be be an object that's found in your your campaign, right? So, I love the versatility of this and how the author has really thought through um, all the variations that that you can you can enjoy. So that it's not just a one one shot and done. You've got a deck and that's it, and that's the only way you can use it, right? There's there's a lot of options in this book to do different things. So this next one is the chalice. It says, the chalice on the card appears as a cup made from a skull. The DM should tell the PC, you owe a debt and it must be repaid. And then you roll 1d6. The person to whom the PC owes the debt has bargained with a low-level fiend to seek them out. It takes 1d4 sessions for the fiend to find and confront them, at which point they can attempt to slay the fiend and then you can use whatever stats you want for the fiend or acquiesce and try to convince your compatriots to help you with the side quest and then it lists some possible debts so what's really cool about that is you can have this sort of subplot that's coming in because of this card that you drew um and and what's nice is it's a mystery because it says 1d4 sessions right so this fiend may not even show up so you just hear that you have a debt that needs to be repaid and then it's kind of maybe forgotten or something that keeps coming up but then nothing happens and then all of a sudden this fiend shows up later and it has to do with this and so later you can explain to the player look i rolled a d4 and it was three sessions from now so that's why it took a while but i didn't forget about you it was just based on on this uh, 1d4 roll uh, so some of the options here for the possible debts, de debts, it says you made a bargain vow to a creature god in your youth in order to escape some small inconsequential fate. You had thought the incident insignificant and over time imagined that your vow made in the dead of night, though effective, was after all probably solved just by coincidence. But now that entity demands you fulfill your side of the bargain. So just reading that i mean a couple things come to mind is this actually true did these things happen in the past and it's just now coming to light because you do this card or is this card somehow because it's connected to fate going back in time and rewriting your history and inserting this kind of retconning you um, into having this event in your past that didn't previously exist either one i think is fascinating and has a lot of potential so i think uh again the author's done some cool stuff here your criminal past has caught up with you the crime syndicate boss or individual you owed a large sum of money to or borrowed something from has found you a person from your past an abandoned lover perhaps offers a way to free yourself of the guilt over you leaving them behind and that's just the first three there's six different options here i'm not going to read them all i want you to get the book read them all and just to have a lot of fun i mean these these ideas of of debts you could even just use this as a debt table right maybe you want to have uh some story side plot a debt is a perfect side plot because a debt is something that's kind of hanging over your head right so you can use this little table 1d6 to to have an NPC have a debt or have a character have a debt even without this deck so I'm all about when we look at these videos and the weekly series etc reusability finding ways to use stuff we see in these books over and over because then you get more for the money in this case it's only six dollars and 79 cents so as of this recording so I think you're getting a lot of value for that all right next we have the valley of regret this is a fun one. So it's after a moment in which you are able to take in the details of the card, it appears to become stained with red liquid, eventually all of it dissolving, turning to slick dark blood running between your fingers. Nothing seems to happen beyond that at first, 
but over time, as you set out on your travels again, or as you move about the city you are staying in, you hear footsteps and voices behind you. They seem to mention you by name. So how creepy is that? Really cool. As this continues, broken up by other players' turns, 1d6 times rolled by your um, DM, you, you turn and see nothing. Each time you try to ignore it and go about your business, yet after a while you hear the same sounds again. Eventually, after you've run out of turns on your 1d6 roll, you turn and you see you are be, being followed by a group of melancholy, gray-faced people. They wear damaged gray clothes and their faces are expressionless. You come to realize, perhaps recognizing the occasional face, that this crowd is every person you have ever killed or who has died through your actions, many of which you are no doubt unaware of. They simply stare at you as you look at them, and as you walk, they follow you audibly, discussing the minutia of their lives, as was who they miss, the events they'll never partake in. No one else in your group can see or hear them. You have become a haunted one and can change your proficiencies should you choose. So you see this beautiful story of like these creepy dead things following you, but um, it's it's connected to you because these are people that you've either killed or have died as a result of things you've done in the past. I could say maybe you could even twist it to be people that will be impacted by you in the future. Uh, if, if maybe it's a newer character and you just don't have that history. Um, and then you take on a lineage from, you know, or not really a lineage, I, I guess it's a background, uh, from Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. And that's that's pretty fun because you get all the, um, the flavor of that and it's kind of sprung on you. So it's acting like a lineage. That's why I wanted to call it a lineage because lineages can be thrust upon your character, right? So I like it. I like that it gives this depth to the background of the haunted one. And it's all from drawing this card. I also like, again, that the author is like, okay, 1d6 times you turn around and see nothing. So it's you don't have to use that as a DM. Maybe you just say, okay, I'm going to have you do it two, three times, and then that's it. But it gives you an option to roll and come up with that as well. And uh, I really like that. And uh, it's just one of the 26 cards. So fun, flavorful stuff. So you can see they're varied. One of them, you get a mount. This one, you're getting... Uh, like a background thrust upon you which is nice because a lot of times too with backgrounds it's just a starting point you know maybe you started as a hermit or something and so you kind of got through all of that and explained it and and it's kind of dried up and not really used anymore right there's not much to draw from it anymore so now all of a sudden you get a new background thrown at you or at least a partial one all right, the last card we're going to look at, and remember there's 26, and we only looked at four, so there's going to be a lot more waiting for you when you buy this book. This is called The Moonlit Blades. Love the art. All of these have such fun, evocative art of what the card is. So at the next available opportunity, a statue or any sculpted figure, artwork, or carving with a mouth, including sword, pommels, shield bosses, etc., comes to life briefly possessed by the spirit of a murdered person in order to scream at you the name of their murderer and the reason they were killed. But they also warn you that your drawing of that card was due to a spell performed in a distant city by one of your enemies who has located the deck and also by extension you, now sending agents to exact their revenge on you and steal the remaining deck from your party. You must be on alert for 1d6 shadowy assassins bearing the crest of the faction or organization of the DM's choice on their crossbow or knife. Uh, these assassins use the standard assassin stats from the monster manual with any adjustments, and, uh, and the author gr graciously gives the page number in the monster manual, which I think is nice. Uh, the DM should roll against a DC of 17 to initiate a surprise attack at any point of rest, relaxation, or fun for the party that they or the DM choose to instigate. If the roll is between 12 and 16, the DM should suggest or signal the assassin's presence but the PC's perception check with a DC of 12 must be rolled to notice the assassin's crest and realize they are potentially under attack. If the DM's roll is below 12, they must allow the PC to see the crest early enough to give the PC an opportunity to surprise the assassin. Once all the rolled assassins are dispatched, the player is free 
to carry on with their adventures as before, though the DM might might well be inspired to follow up on their origin. So this is one of several cards that kind of introduces a faction, and we're going to talk more about factions in a minute in this book because there is something cool that the author has in here for that. But but again, you can see how, how varied these cards are. They all have different effects. A lot of them are not instantaneous, so that is something you might need to manage with your player and say, this deck is far-reaching it affects the fates often you draw from it and nothing happens for some time and then when you've completely forgotten about it something will happen you know however you want to spin it as a dm but but whip up a story you can use some of the early pages of the book the lore uh, to help you with that but um I think it's just a lot of fun. There's so many ways. I mean, that you could even have an NPC have this deck and you can draw from it and just uh, mix it up. It, it kind of randomizes things a little bit. Gives you subplots, gives you uh, side quests, lots of good stuff. So I got to zoom out here on this, but I, I wanted to show just a part of this this fun little and there's a lot more surrounding this table too. I'm just I'm just showing you an excerpt because again I don't want to give too much away. But the author gives you this cool table that goes all the way to twenty. I'm just showing you the first seven. Uh, used to to name factions, cults, etc. So you've got various columns here to help you construct the name, and then you've got. A section on what is the focus of that group what is their goal their objective their motivation etc so just reading across I mean let's assume we rolled ones a bunch of times so it says the lights of the golden path so that sounds ominous and appropriate for a faction name or a cult name so and there's a lot of options in here I, I like all of them um, sometimes you get a table like this and a few of the names are just not the best and if you roll those you roll again because you don't like them but in reading through i did feel like all of them were good so that's helpful and here's here's one of the the motivations the destruction of the incumbent ruling crown or political class small-scale terrorist attacks and assassination of minor bureaucratic figures so that could be the goal right um and then there's a bunch more listed there's six different ones listed so thought that was nice i mean you know when you make a product like this you could just focus on the deck give you the deck and be done but the author again is trying to think of the possible uses and really flesh out uh your options so that you walk away from the book feeling like okay i had everything i really needed from that book to, to use it um, i didn't have to go homebrew a bunch of stuff didn't have to go find a bunch of stuff you might have to print some things but that's okay uh that's not uncommon with, with Dungeons and Dragons, right? So lastly, I wanted to show this uh, picture of the divination method that you can use. So th there's also a divination method called the Cross of Fate that you can use with these cards. So even further uses for this deck, I'm not gonna go into details. The author gives you a lot of details on how this works, but you can see, once again, beautifully painted art by Gareth showing these cards in action so you can see the actual backs of the cards even in this particular example in the artwork and i love that um looks like a very intense reading going on you've even got this little monkey and somebody back here with a knife who knows what they're up to um but i, I like it i like it and uh I enjoyed reading through it, but I'm not going to spoil it. I want you to get the book and enjoy, enjoy the read of the divination as well. So that's pretty much it for this book. I do want to mention with all of these individual reviews I've been doing, I don't get paid for this. This is just my opinion and I'm just getting free copies of the books so that I have uh, the material to make the video and look through it all and, and come up with what makes sense. I do ask people that send me their books to give me some ideas of things in terms of like pages to show or not show but it's still up to me which which pages I pick and what I'm gonna say so I really enjoy this series I hope you guys enjoy it as well and I hope you check out this 
weird deck of many weirds. It is listed in the video description as a link. Click it. And if you buy this book or anything with that link, it's going to help out the channel with a little bit of revenue from that affiliate code. So thanks so much for doing that and enjoy this book. I'm looking forward to more from Gareth Slightholm. If you've got a title you'd like us to consider for a video review on the channel, please see the video description for a link to our Google form where you can submit your title. We can't promise we're going to cover every single title we receive, but we do appreciate receiving them and having the opportunity to consider your work. If you'd like to support the channel, consider purchasing one of our books. We've got Van Richten's Librem of Lineages with tr truly unique lineages for any setting, as well as optional rules to help you deal with lineages in your campaign. And we've got Potions Unlocked, which is over 100 pages in both digital and print-on-demand format. Tons of new potions with a short story for each one explaining its origin, as well as potion locations, plants, etc. There's even a magic school in there where you can learn to do potions, so it's perfect if you're using Strixhaven. And we've got the Feywild Companion, which is over 150 pages of Feywild fun for both DMs and players. You've got complete adventures, encounters, brand new creatures, lots of fey creatures, as well as a subclass for every single class, spells, magic items, you name it. It even includes rules on how to alter monster size and keep them balanced. Then we've got Fizzbend's Vault of Draconic Secrets. Tons of dragon themed player content with a subclass for each class, draconic gifts, magic items, trinkets, and adventure hooks to tie everything together for the DM to uh, incorporate all the new stuff in the book into the campaign. Or if you're just a player, you can use those adventure hooks to maybe fill out your backstory as well. So we hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave us a comment. We'll respond to all those comments. Follow us on Twitter at Splinterverse and stay tuned because we have so much more fun D&D content headed your way. And until next time, happy adventuring.